During his own CNN town hall, President Biden expressed his opposition to forgiving any student debt over $10,000, stating he would not, quote, forgive the billions of dollars of debt for people who have gone to Harvard and Yale and Penn. Here to discuss that statement and the long history behind that statement is front of the show and founder of the Daily Poster, David Sirota. Great to see you, David. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. All right. So what did you find here, sir? Uh, well, look, Joe Biden and student debt is a long 40 year love affair between Joe Biden and the institution of student debt. I mean, Joe Biden is not a particularly ideological politician, uh, but one thing he absolutely 100 percent does believe in is the institution of student debt. Going back 40 years, he has led the fight to make it very, very difficult, if not impossible, for people to reduce their student debt or eliminate their student debt uh, in bankruptcy court. So you have a situation where people are carrying forward uh, tens of thousands of dollars of debt, even into uh, when they become a, a senior, an elderly person, uh, and they cannot use bankruptcy courts uh, to reduce uh, or eliminate any of that debt. So that is context for Joe Biden now uh, positioning himself against Democratic leaders, a push for him to use existing executive authority to reduce uh, $50,000 of student debt. And I think people need to understand the context of this, that when Joe Biden uh, basically positions himself against that, uh, the other Democrats, uh, that this is not some uh, flippant thought of his, this is not some casual campaign of his, this is something he deeply believes in. He deeply believes in preserving the institution of student debt. Let's go back in time as well there, David, to like 2005, bank rupture, discharging and that. Can you explain his role in making and creating this crisis that we already have? Sure. I mean, Joe Biden representing Delaware uh, represented the credit card industry back in the in the 2000s. Uh, the credit card industry wanted a piece of legislation uh, that would make it harder for people to reduce or eliminate their debts in general and to prioritize paying back uh, unsecured credit card debt uh, instead of other kinds of debt. And so Joe Biden uh, led the fight to pass that bill uh, was ultimately signed uh, by George W. Bush. It was mostly a Republican bill, but Joe Biden played not just he didn't just vote for it. He played a leadership role in sculpting that bill. And one of the provisions uh, in that bill uh, dealt with student debt and the dischargeability of educational debt. And the basic basically what came out of it was is that it's essentially all but impossible to be in a situation where you're bankrupt, uh, where a court uh, can reduce some of your educational debt. In other words, educational debt was was kind of specially protected as something that, that is sacrosanct and cannot be reduced. And the argument was that by doing that, it made educational uh, debt interest rates lower, that banks were willing to, to lend more to people, knowing that they could keep you essentially as an indentured servant for your entire life uh, if you couldn't pay it back. Uh, so that was the argument for it. But obviously now we're in a situation where student debt has skyrocketed. Uh, people, uh, uh, wages have not kept up. Uh, the jobs that... That, that pay people uh, have not kept up to help to let people essentially pay back the, those debts. And so people are stuck carrying forward huge amounts of student debt uh, into their late adulthood. Yeah. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, David, that bankruptcy bill is what Elizabeth Warren famously tangled with Biden on and then basically failed to bring up at all during her presidential campaign against him, choosing instead to make a uh, Spurious attacks on Senator Sanders as a closet sexist. Right. Anyway, um, talk to me about this is one thing that always drives me crazy about Democrats. They love to hide behind process and procedure to keep from doing the things that the base wants them to do. So, for example, with student debt, somehow Biden is trying to make the case that $10,000, no problem, you could forgive that using an executive order, but $50,000, you couldn't do that. You see the same thing with the minimum wage. Oh, the bird rule, we can't violate the bird rule, can't overrule the Senate parliamentarians, so can't go forward with that. You see this time and time again, where rather than, art, rather than admitting, they actually don't support these things, they don't actually really want to do it, they try to hide behind process, hide behind the mean Republicans, make every excuse in the book for why they're not doing what people actually want them to do. Yeah, this is what there's a word for this. This is called uh, lying uh, when they say that they're <laughs> for something uh, and then they insist that they can't do anything when they obviously have the power to do it. Those two examples you gave, th those are absolute lies uh, that Joe Biden does have the executive authority to reduce student debt. Uh, 
the vice president of the United States can waive a, a ruling from the parliamentarian if the vice president wants to when it comes to uh, allowing uh, the minimum wage to be in a reconciliation bill. So we should call it what it is. It is lying. It is not just, you know, obfuscating or being kind of dishonest. It's just straight up lying. You say you want something. You The people have given you the power to do those things. And then you don't deliver on those things when you have the power to do those things. You're basically lying. You're defrauding the public. And I think the good news is, is that I think with there being more attention on the process and and the 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 details of the process coming out and being exposed uh, for for what it is, which is that Democrats do have the power to do these things. I think there's more of a chance that the lying won't necessarily work. Now, the problem is the political problem is that the Democrats go forward and think the lying is working. If they somehow think, let's say, on the minimum wage, that they can run to voters and say and, and say the word parliamentarian a bunch of times <laughs> and that the average <laughs> voter is going to think that that's an acceptable excuse to not pass a minimum wage. I mean, they're going to be probably face a pretty serious backlash at the polls. Yeah. And well, deserve it. That'll be a fun one. David, great to see you. Thanks, David. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll have more rising for you after this.